Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you had a second chance? Are you willing to take a gamble, open your heart, and change your thoughts and perspective for a new chance at life? Welcome to the Wisdom Cafe. I'm your host, Arthur Tassinello, a relationship and leadership coach and mentor. Join me each week for insights into how you can have more love, happiness, peace, and abundance in your life without giving up who you are. Know that you are powerful and you are the governor of your life. So listen, learn, and leap into a better future. Hi, I'm Arthur Tassinello, your host for the Wisdom Cafe, and welcome to another edition. We always talk, I talk about second chances all the time because each day you have the ability to have another chance at doing things maybe a little bit differently, maybe a little bit better, uh, something that will uplift you, maybe uplift the people around you. You know, I had a second chance some 30 some years ago and, and it, I, it's like by chance I had a second chance because I had a son at a very young age. He was getting older. I wasn't planning on having any more kids but, or even getting married again. But then one day, for some odd reason, I said to God, you know, God, I've been an absentee dad for so long. If I ever had the chance to do it again, I want you to know it would be totally different. Of course, God in his infinite wisdom, two years later, introduced me to a woman, we married, and 14 months later, we had a little girl. So that was my second chance because she's 31 now, and for all of these years, we are very, very close. And my son and I mended our relationship, and we have a great relationship as well. But again, that was my second chance for that but I've had second chances with a lot of things, and perhaps you've had some second chances in your life. I like to talk about maybe a second chance at love in some way. I'll look at what Rumi has to say about love. And Rumi said, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. See, our job is to remove the barriers and open up the floodgates to love. And it's not always easy, is it? Because from sometimes from a very young age, we get hurt. Things happen to us. Things that we don't realize are happening to us until maybe later on in life. I have often said this, that in the first seven years of life, we are really programmed by our parents and our teachers and the people around us and other family members. Sometimes, as Lori and I, and Lori's here with me, and I'll introduce her in a second, but Lori and I were talking, that sometimes we don't even realize how long it is before we start to maybe, well, call unprogram ourselves to seek new knowledge, different knowledge than what we grew up with and what we were surrounded with. And it's not always easy. Sometimes, for me, I grew up with a big chip on my shoulder for a lot of things that happened as I was growing up. And it took me a long time to understand how to maybe ask questions of myself. And it's not asking questions of somebody else. It's asking questions of myself to go deep, to figure out why am I the way I am? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? And of course, you typically want to always question things that are, aren't going right in your life and understanding yourself because it's not outside of you. It's not that somebody's really doing something to you I could look at my dad and I could say, you know, he did this or he didn't do this. But the reality is, is that I allowed things to happen. And we allow things to happen sometimes without even realizing that we're allowing them to happen. So before we get any deeper into this, I want to introduce Lori Arbell. She is our a resident artist <laughs> and an artist teacher. Um, she does a lot of things. So Lori, yeah. tell me, tell us, tell the audience a little bit about you. Yay, I'm just so happy to be here. I was an art teacher for 20 years and mm -hmm. it has evolved into being um, an art coach, healing art coach and a practicing artist. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, this is a, 
this is some of your work right behind you, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And so what medium do you typically work in? Well, I work um, in any medium that I need to get it out. That's why I love healing arts. Yeah. So it's not always the same. Right. And that's what I do with my And how long clients. have you been yeah. doing this? Since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I've always so been playing and experimenting. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> and changing. Did, did your parents support you in doing this? Well, that's a, one of those stories. It's like, did they? I always had the art materials, so mm -hmm. you would say yes. Um, at the same time, I went along the teaching role because yes, of course I'm a teacher, but I did it because I was told that's safe and that um, art could always be a hobby. That's interesting. So there's a subliminal little undercut that was quite powerful to making it or not yeah, making it. Yeah, <laughs> and that, that's, I like what you said mainly because it just brings out the point is that your parents supported it in a sense because it was safe, <laughs> right? It wasn't out of the comfort zone. It was something that they believed that you could do successfully, I guess. Is that right? Right. They just had that? no experience with artists making it. And you could make your art, right. but you teach too. Do you, uh, so this, this is interesting. This brings up a question for me now to ask you. I don't know if there's a good answer for this or whatever the answer is. But do you think that because you were a girl or back then, that art was okay, but if it was a, if it was a boy, mm -hmm. would they have said, I wonder would, if they would have said, hey, uh, you know, the art, you know, you need to go do something else, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't even, I couldn't even go there because I still faith, felt a similar thing. It mm -hmm. was a hobby. It was highly suggested in different ways. Mm -hmm. It's a hobby. You won't make it as an artist. So I assume it wouldn't even have been given a shot to a gentleman as well, but, or my brother, but. Yeah, but you were okay with that. I didn't question it because yeah. I loved my parents and I'm a happy human and kind and so I just thought, okay, I'm a teacher. Well, why not? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I always make the best out of everything. <laughs> so one of the things I really wanted to talk about today is, and I make some notes for myself, so to the audience and to you, what if you could trade living on autopilot for oh. living and loving intensely and successfully? I say that because most of us really do live on autopilot. Think about just getting up in the morning and the things that you do, right? When you get up in the morning, it's do your bathroom stuff and then you, maybe you make your coffee or you have your juice or then you always put your, your pants on or your dress on with the left leg first and the right leg second. I mean, we are on autopilot for so many things that we do, the habits that we have. And it kind of it kind of goes back over into even how we operate with our maybe our significant other, right? Uh, maybe just with our peers or our siblings. We kind of do the same thing over and over again. We act the same way over and over again. And well, are we actually being authentic in our within ourselves? And are we being loving to ourselves and to them? What, what, what's your thought about that? I have so many thoughts. <laughs> Start anywhere. Yeah, I was just literally talking about this autopilot this morning with a student. Mm -hmm. And um, to be an autopilot and be content, in the end, I do believe I'd, I would just feel bored. Mm. Um, I'd feel um, safe, comforted, and lucky and fortunate, but it wouldn't be exciting. I, I think mm -hmm. you would, I would start, to, I would perhaps lose that, that glow. The glow comes from having something hard happen and then feeling the intense opposite. And that roller coaster is exciting. In fact, sure. most people like roller coasters, <laughs> even though they're screaming, life is like the human experience is a roller coaster. Yeah. Well, without a doubt, <laughs> that's a hundred percent. Who doesn't have a roller coaster life? There's yeah. nobody. That, although, you know, it brings up, this is, a, this is interesting because I did meet a doctor at a party once and we were just chatting a little bit and I, and I asked him, you know, what he did. And he told me he was a doctor. And I said, you know, well, how did you start doing that? It was like his family, everybody in the family was a doctor. So there wasn't, mm. it was like an automatic the expectation. Right, it was automatic. You'll be a doctor. 
and he was supported to be a doctor and his life was just very just like hmm. like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. was, I call it almost like a flat line. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not that he was dead, but mm -hmm. I, that's the way I w felt about it because my life has always been so erratic. It's been mm. all over the place doing a million different things. But I love that. Interesting. So like years ago, I was married <laughs> and it was really beautiful. And um, I spoke to someone who said, Lori, you keep saying that you're happy, but you're doing this. How can you? And I was, ah, I went to him specifically mm -hmm. because Very I wasn't creating anymore. Oh. Mm. He goes, how can you create if there's, if it's static? Now I didn't, I was really frustrated with what he shared with me. I didn't quite agree fully of what he was saying, mm -hmm. but there was pieces that truly were enlightening and made sense. If there is no emotion, it doesn't mean you have to be depressed or like extreme. We're right. talking just feeling is creative, brings creative juices flowing. Like you see, it's yeah. getting complicated, I'm saying, but it's not. No, <laughs> no well, look, we're all kind of the same and we're all different. Yeah, I mean, it's similarly still, different. Sim right, similarly different, thank you. <laughs> uh, I know that a lot of the people that I went to high school with and I grew up in that town, a lot of them are still there and this is a lot of years later mm -hmm. and they're still kind of doing the same thing. I would have found that very boring because I've never done that. Right, and maybe they're truly, truly happy too. And, and, and exactly, some of them are. <laughs> right, and some of them are. <laughs> we're different. We are different. So when we talk about this, right, we were talking about most days we go through the, the, emo the motions of mm -hmm. doing things. Uh, how many of you out there want to be get unstuck from doing that? Mm. I'm not saying that you need to or should do that. And that's one of my favorite tick words, yeah. should. Uh, but if you're looking to make some more progress, in other words, any problem that you're having, stop thinking that that one problem is permanent, yeah. right? And that nothing that you can do will change that. Because the truth is you have the ability to change anything and everything in your life if mm -hmm. you're willing to do that. Yes. It takes work. I often notice that when I coach people about changing things in their life, there's, a, there's usually a big hesitancy in the beginning mm -hmm. because it's so easy to stay, I call it being comfortable in your uncomfortableness. So you're really uncomfortable doing what you're doing, but it's also comfortable because you don't have to make the change and you're afraid of making that change. Change is always happening, whether it's happening to you or with your permission. So why not think about making some changes that can be very helpful to you changes that will bring your, you closer to some of your relationships, changes that will help you move forward and not feel so stuck. Or maybe you're unhappy because you're, you think you can't make a change. I, I know a lot of people that actually believe that, you know, that with being with their partner, and we see it all the time in very dysfunctional relationships, that they, they're stuck in it because they believe that they have to stay there because they don't have any options. Right. And I know sometimes options are really, it's tough to find options sometimes. Right, or scary. Right, it's very frightening to find options or try to look for options because again, you're comfortable in your uncomfortableness. Right, that's comforting. Yeah. To at least know. Right, you know exactly where you are. So I would implore you to maybe seek out some help from somebody uh, or, and I don't have my book in front of me. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable. There you go. I like that. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. Thank you for that very much. <laughs> yeah, so my book is Your Key to Love and Happiness. It's actually a workbook. And in the workbook, you will be able to go deeper into yourself, mm. deeper into, I'll say, your psyche. And that doesn't mean that you may not need therapy or want to go to therapy, uh, but you can at any moment start to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. The more you understand who you are and how you operate, the easier it will be for you to start to make changes and see where you can make a change mm -hmm. and how to facilitate those kind of changes. So stop thinking the problem is permanent because mm -mm. no problem is per permanent. 
In fact, maybe stop looking at things as a problem and say to yourself, gee, I think I have a solution here. I know that when in business, many times, people would come to me with a problem and I would say, okay, if you will come to me with several solutions, I'll mm. help you work through that. And that is, I right. find, the best way to do that because what we don't want to do is to always rely on somebody else to solve a problem for us. Right. We need to start Have to solve ownership. our own yeah. problems, don't we? Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, we're about ready to take a break here, and so we'll come back in just a minute with Lori, and we'll, Lori will tell us a little bit more about her artistry and the things that she does. All right. We'll be back in a second, <laughs> folks. Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you had a second chance? Are you willing to take a gamble and change your thoughts and perspective? Welcome to the Wisdom Cafe. I'm your host, Arthur Tassinello, a relationship and leadership coach and mentor. Join me each Wednesday at 3 p.m. to explore what it is to be human and create that second chance. You've been watching the Wisdom Cafe with Arthur Tassinello. For more information, please contact the studio at 888 994-4995 or send an email to arthur at arthur at arthur and now back to the show <laughs> we're back and we're having a lot of fun over here because i'm going to put laurie on the spot right now and as don asked so laurie what would you do if you had a second chance especially now that you know you're divorced uh -huh. right uh -huh. and so what's a second chance look like for you a second chance is every day because I think every day is a new chance to evolve and expand mm -hmm. and try new things, be with someone I love and care for, mm -hmm. and experiment with new ways of expressing myself. Yeah. So it's kind of hard <laughs> to answer that. <laughs> I get second chances every morning I wake up. Yeah, we all do, don't we? We have yeah. a second chance of doing whatever it is that yeah. we want to do. A and second chance, like there was a question from uh, just yesterday, I was at the Parkland Commerce mm -hmm. and they said, what would you do um, if there was no uh, failure or no fear of failure? Like you would succeed no matter what. Right. What, yeah, what would you do? And we didn't get to my spot, but I really wanted to share. Well then share it right but here. But you said if you got a second chance, I would travel, this is so random, but I would um, travel with my kids around the world mm -hmm and share love, light, just getting to know humans. So what do you think world. your kids would do with that? Well, would, this is the conundrum, right? right? right. Would they love it? Would they push right. it away? And I would ask them first how we could collaborate to make something that they would like to. And I like that what you said, collaborate, because many times I know that I see families do this all the time. I can't move right now why can't you move right now well because my kids are in grade school and my kids are in high school and i don't want to take them away from their friends and i you know i don't want to take them out of their school and all this stuff so we're we're living our lives kind of on hold right which could be a conundrum it is a conundrum because <laughs> many people do that all the time i hear it, and i'm sure you've heard it from other people of course. it's like well as soon as my kids go get out of college or go to college then i'll become an artist or I'll right. do this with my life. I'll do that with my life. And uh, I got to tell you, that's not the so case. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the case, number one. And I've done it myself, not so much with my, my children, but I've done it often enough with, I'm doing something, I want to do something else. It takes me a very long time before I start to go in that direction. Right. To change, make the change. Correct. But then we get back to it's up to you it's the right. opportunity is there all the time right. the opportunity is there from the minute you wake up in the morning when you have the idea or you have the idea right exactly so we, i also like to talk i also like to integrate into this happiness because when you get up in the morning mm. how do you feel right and if you're not feeling like terrific for whatever reason mm -hmm. do you think you can change that Yes, you can. Of you can course, change that yeah. in a second. Yeah. You can change that very moment, that very thought. Uh, I like to do this one. So 
people are sa you're sad. Make believe you're sad out there. Make believe you're sad. You're sad. And I go, well, I'm sorry that you're sad, but why don't you just put a little smile on your face? Yeah, force it a little. Force. F just force the smile. And see, this happens to me even, I can't even fake <laughs> this, because every time I say force the smile and I start the smile, everything just changes automatically. That's Every, true. Everything lights That's real. up. It is real. It's real with the head and science. Right. It's real. Right. As soon as you force a smile, you, I laugh. I, I start to laugh at myself. Right. Laughing at yourself is okay. Yeah. Is that right? That was it. Yeah. That was the magic. That was the magic right there and then. So you can do that. There's so many things that you can do in your life to make your own life better. Stop wishing for Mr. Right or Miss, Mrs. Right or Miss Right to come into your life to make your life better. Magical. It starts with us. Yeah, right. it starts with it's all within us all the time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because if we're happy, it attracts happy. It's, it's just the way it works. Yeah, it does. It attracts <laughs> happiness. Yeah. And you can be in somebody else's life and and add to their happiness, mm -hmm. and somebody else can add to your happiness. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect somebody to come into your life and to make you happy. Mm -hmm. So I have one little trick. Yeah, please. So share it with me. Um, as a human, like I'm a happy person, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I'm truly like happy in the moment. I get quite sad. Someone could say depressed mm -hmm. sometimes or uh, even in it now, um, but I still look towards the light. But when I'm really don't have the smile on my face, like yesterday, um, I have a... You didn't smile yesterday. Well, oh of course God. I smiled throughout <laughs> the day randomly, you know, but an overarching cloud. Sure. And um, what I do, which was gifted to me from somebody else, I've created a soundtrack of awesomeness. And anytime I hear a mm -hmm. song that makes me feel beautiful, inspired, yes, 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 I put it into that playlist so that when, like mm -hmm. yesterday, I put it on, it's like, okay, I'm okay. And automatically, you know, going from, I'm not, I'm not okay right now. Like sure. I'm shaking and I don't know why, but I put this on and I'm okay. So that's, that's better than down here. So that's just like forcing a smile. Yes, because that's exactly it. Right. So, okay. What I'm going to ask that? you to do this right now. If you're out there and you're listening or you're listening to this replay, if you're not feeling like 100%, force a smile and start laughing. <laughs> or at least laugh at me. Either, either way works, yeah. right? Yeah. So... Now we start, We talked about, or I started talking a little bit about the problem. Don't make the problem problem permanent because it isn't permanent. No matter what you do, nothing, and believing that nothing will change. But stop allowing the problem to become pervasive, mm. which means you have the same problems over and over mm. and over and over again. You can do something about it every time. We have our limiting beliefs about things. And this was not something else that came up for me today, driving up here or driving down here, whichever direction <laughs> I'm going. I'm not sure about this You're up and down out. thing. <laughs> so, but anyway, Side I'm driving, I'm, I'm coming here. And we have these, we live within these beliefs. We all have our belief system about mm -hmm. everything, yeah. whether it's about politics or it's about raising our kids right or on. doing things for ourselves and so forth or how our parents are and the way they treat us the way we see them uh, with, with everything mm -hmm. we have our own beliefs and we we get stuck in our beliefs to the point where if somebody even a friend believes different than you right. all of a sudden you're not sure if you like your friend anymore right it creates an, an yeah. uncomfortable right yeah Instead of I could. allowing the other person to have their own beliefs and go, okay, I, you know, I don't feel that way about it, but that's okay because we care about each other and I'm going to support you no matter what. Instead of getting stuck in our beliefs to the point where everybody outside of our belief circle is a bad person. Right. Just listening yeah. more and then deciding if you like it or not, being open. Yeah, and, that, and that's the other piece of this. Thank you for that. Because nuggets come in that we really never thought we would have seen. Right. In fact, wow, I didn't even think about that. Right. If we're softly listening versus yeah. pushing back. Yeah, and, and that's 
most of the time that's what we do. At the, and ev even if we don't do it outwardly, right. inwardly we're getting all like... Or put a block, a clear block. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, <laughs> this is, doesn't feel good inwardly. I mean, we're not... Yeah. And sometimes we sh we're showing it and we don't really even realize we're showing right. it, do we? Yeah. I know, it's, life is crazy. <laughs> and cool. one of the biggest things, always kind of, I say, just stop believing that you're the problem. Right? Mm. Well, it's, I, for, for a while, I would always like to think I was the problem so that I can improve things, mm -hmm. be, being open to that there could be a place for me to improve. But at yeah. some point, asking good questions, sometimes things are out of our control, and then you get to decide what you want to do moving forward. Yes. It's not black and white. <laughs> it, it's never black and white. Yeah. Although, I have to tell you, when I was very young, everything was either this way or that way until all of a sudden things started to get Ooh, gray so and I went, but how could that happen isn't this is this is right and this is wrong and that's just the way it is that's why these these artworks were made thought patterns that was just all of what we're talking about the black and the white and right. the nuances would come out just like you put in here so you have a little gold in here which is hope right and you have a little green which was the undertones Ah. Like it's all happy, but no, no, no. There's there's other stuff under there. Yeah. <laughs> Artistry to me, I, I wish I could paint. Uh, I shouldn't say I wish I could paint. I could paint if I really That's took right. my time to do it. Right. Right. Yes. Accountable. I, right. Be accountable. Be accountable for all of those things. In fact, be accountable for everything. It's only own it. up to you. You don't want it. You do. Just own that you're not interested. Right. Or, or that you're that scared you, and you, you want to. <laughs> and. So that brings us to right fear, fear of success and Correct. fear of failure, Correct. which are really the same thing. It's really the same thing. We fear not being able to, that we won't be successful. And then we're also fearing that, you know, success would be too much to handle. What would I do with my Correct. success? Correct, I struggle with that. Ah, <laughs> well, we're gonna have to get away from that. Yeah. But anyway, Lori, just how do people reach you? What, what do they do? Oh, say hi um, on Instagram, <laughs> Lori Arbell Art. And that's my website too, Lori Arbell. Yeah. I'd love to say hi, collaborate, work with and you. And where can they see most of your artwork? Um, ooh, at the Brooklyn Cafe. <laughs> that's <laughs> one place, and where else? Um, and right now at um, Studio 18 in Pembroke Pines. I have a gallery at my home as well. And then at the um, Mystic Cafe in Hollywood. Well. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Ah, uh, so honored. It's a pleasure to have <laughs> you here and learn a little bit more about you and to join in the conversation because that helps me so I don't have to talk to myself, <laughs> uh, even though I'm talking to people out there. But to end this day, there's a couple of things. One is, if you have someone that you care about and you haven't talked to them in a while, mm -hmm. I urge you or ask you to pick up the phone, call them, text them. I, you know, almost every day I tell my children that I love them because I don't know how much longer I'll be here and none of us do, it doesn't matter what age you are. Okay. So if there's somebody that you really care about and really love, pick up the phone, text them because I know that don't always wait for them to do it, right? This is your opportunity. Because it's always up to us, when in this case, you, it's always up to me to do the right thing. And the right thing is always to be more loving, to be more kind, to be more empathetic, to be more compassionate, to be more caring. Because the more that you do that, the more love you carry in your heart for people, and the kinder you are to people, that all comes back to you, I guarantee you 100%. I know because I live in that truth because I wasn't always there. So to end the show today, many lo much love and many blessings to all of you out there. Watch the next episode when it comes up next week. And I look forward to chatting with you again. And always reach out. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Lots of love. You have been watching The Wisdom Cafe. Join me each Wednesday at 3 p.m. to explore what it is to be human and create that second chance as I examine ways about how you can have 
more peace, love, and happiness in your life. Until next week, remember this. When you change what you do and the way you look at things, the things you look at.